week on Wealth Track, investing in a global shopping spree. Wintergreen Fund's great investor David Winters looks for bargains among the high-end luxury brands favored by the up-and-coming emerging market consumer. Where is he finding the most valuable jewels? That's next on Consuelo Mac Wealth Track. New York Life, along with Mainstay's family of mutual funds, offers investment and retirement solutions so you can help your clients keep good going. Additional funding provided by Luma Sales, investors seeking exceptional opportunities globally. Wintergreen, your home for global value. And Rosalind P. Walter. Hello and welcome to this edition of Wealth Track. I'm Consuelo Mack. Contrary to popular belief, the grass is not always greener on the other side. As a matter of fact, when it comes to the economy and stock markets right now, the U.S. is looking relatively rosy. A recent report from economic research star Nancy Lazar sums it up nicely. The U.S. outlook is pretty positive. And my favorite line of hers, and middle America remains our favorite emerging market. Lazar and her team at their new macro research firm, Cornerstone Macro, list a number of American positives, including U.S. employment is increasing at a pretty steady pace. U.S. manufacturing renaissance is helping to lift U.S. vehicle production. Housing is likely to continue to be a driver of GDP. U.S. domestic company profits have led profit increases. Contrast that to these observations. Italian recession, banks bad debt is rising, and industrial production is in a severe recession. China new normal, both exports and imports are down sharply over the past five months. And the S&P and emerging market stock markets have decoupled. Well, have they ever? As this chart shows, comparing the performance of the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, ETF, and the S&P 500 over the last two years, the U.S. has been winning hands down, despite the fact that investors have been shunning U.S. stocks and favoring emerging market ones. There is one area, however, where emerging markets continue to shine, demand for luxury goods. According to a recent report by Bain & Company, sales of worldwide luxury goods will grow as much as 50% faster than global GDP, led by emerging market consumers in Southeast Asia and South America in particular, with annual growth in China downshifting to a still impressive 7%. Bain notes the increasing purchasing power of so-called Henry's, high earnings, not rich yet consumers, who are becoming a new baby boom sized generation in emerging markets. That is the sweet spot this week's great investor guest is targeting. He is David Winters, portfolio manager of the value-oriented Wintergreen Fund, which he founded in 2005. Since its launch, this go anywhere, invest in anything fund has outperformed the market and its mutual fund category. And Winters himself was nominated for Morningstar's International Stock Fund Manager of the Year Award in 2011 and 2010. Wintergreen is one of WealthTrack's sponsors, but his track record speaks for itself. To begin, I asked Winters the leading question of our time. Is the recent rise in interest rates for real and what difference will it make? I think it's for real. I think interest rates will go a lot higher over many years. It's inevitable. It's happened before. It'll happen again. I think it's a huge opportunity for the few of us who are focused on getting rich because stocks, nobody really looks at them anymore. Nobody cares. Everybody's trading them. They're not interested in buying individual businesses with growing coupons. So what difference is a rising interest rate environment going to make to your investment strategy or the kinds of companies that you invest in? Well, we love companies that have what we call the trifecta, which have you know, a good improving economic situation, management that's good, and a cheap price. And we can find lots of those opportunities today. And we want a company that has a business with a growing coupon. So even though if interest rates go up, our coupon goes up a lot faster. So when you say a growing coupon, what do you mean? That they can grow earnings, free cash flow, grow business values. And that's really the key thing. 
there are a number of people who are out there saying that, in fact, stocks are either fairly valued or they're getting expensive. What's your view in the universe that you're looking at? At Wintergreen, the work that we do on the companies that we love, we think a lot of them are very, very undervalued. So it's a stock picker's market, right. a security selector's market. It's not just show up and buy the index. So, so uh, but are they, are they you know, more inexpensive, more valuable now than they were, let's say, three or four years ago? Well, in the crash, it was just wild. Right. Because you could buy and it just kept going down and you had to have the courage of conviction, which we did. The difference is the economy is actually getting better in the U.S. It's getting better in Asia. So you're going to have the wind at your back. And if you can own the right kind of businesses, some of them just trade at absolutely the wrong price. And the wrong price being the right price as far as you're concerned. You know, one of your contrarian views has also been uh, that you think that inflation is going to go higher. Now, there is no one out there who is concerned about inflation or thinks that inflation is going to you know, suddenly occur, whether it's globally or domestically. Why do you think inflation is an issue that we should be paying attention to? I know in my life and everybody's life that I know, everything costs more. You know, whether it be feeding your family, feeding your pets, you know, health care, whatever it is, it costs more. You know, so that's why we love businesses that have pricing power, that can raise the price at which they charge for their products, and people will gladly buy them. So that's an interesting point, because of course a lot of companies have not had pricing power. And, and in, in fact, if, if you look at the government statistics, there's Ben Bernanke, for instance, is very concerned still about deflation. So, but you're saying in selective places that pricing power is still very much a fact of life and those are the companies you want to invest in. We are focused on trying to find those wonderful gems and build them in a, into a portfolio, the Wintergreen Fund, you know, we feel like we've got an express train, a long-term value creation express train. And, you know, it's not a guarantee or a warranty, but I'm all in. Right. You know, all my friends and family are all in. And we think by having the right companies in, a, in an intelligent portfolio, you can get rich. So what kinds of companies have pricing power, then, uh, that, that you find are benefiting that you own at Wintergreen? Well, you know, we love the watch and jewelry business, and you've heard me talk about this before. I'd love to hear it again, number one, and for the viewers who haven't heard you before, talk to us about it. Well, for men, the only acceptable form of jewelry besides a wedding ring is a watch. And most guys, it's the way they can distinguish themselves. We saw it in China, very much so. And even if they don't buy the most expensive watch, they'll buy a Tissot. So Swatch has low, medium, and high-end watches. And it's a fabulous business. And, and Swatch, of course, being one of your major holdings. Correct. Right. And so we think it's a fabulous business because they can raise prices, sell more units, and it's super shareholder oriented. And it's run by a management team that, you know, eats, breathes, sleeps, watches. You know? So that's one example. You know, a big, another big example is Nestle. You know, Nestle is in the pet food business. Right. People in America love their pets more than their relatives, generally. And, you know, and they'll spend anything for Fido because Fido doesn't care if you've had a bad hair day. I have a friend of mine who has a new dog. She loves the dog. The dog makes her so happy. She'll spend anything on that dog. And so, you know, if we can find these niches, especially niches that are global, have free cash flow and, you know, multi-currency, that you can sleep well at night, we really feel that the money that we're investing today, Consuelo, mm -hmm. will create sustainable wealth for our investors tomorrow. And, and how, is, is this on a capital appreciation basis or is, is it a, you know, reinvesting dividends and, you know, share buyback basis? I mean, what's the kind of the total package that you look for in addition to the trifecta that you mentioned? Well, first of all, we, we love business values growing. So ultimately, you've got to have earnings growth or you've got to have a company that sells out. Um, but we really like businesses that grow in value. We like dividends. It's nice to get paid to wait. Reinvestment back in the company is fine. Buybacks, if stocks, companies are really cheap, the stock is undervalued, we always en encourage companies to retire their shares. But sometimes they have other things to do with the money. But it's an unusual situation today 
where most of the public is in cash and institutions, we think they're going to get crushed. And in bonds. And right, bonds, right. just annihilated in the next five years. So, so let me ask you about that. So, so, so why do you think you know, that, that the bond market, for instance, in particular, or cash, why are those dangerous places to be? Well, rates are going up. So if you have a 30-year bond, it's going to be worth less. Right. And people have been scrambling for income since the crash. And so, you know, I can't give you an exact, but a lot of folks are in fixed income. Right. And I think it's going to be an awful place to be. And then inflation will erode your purchasing power over time. And then all these folks are trying to play in these other things that are going to make them money. And the you reality, mean alternative investments? Alternatives, and uh, all kinds of mirages. But at the end of the day, it's a great business with pricing power that's global. And David, that's key because I'm, I mean, I was looking at your top, you know, five holdings that the most recent top five holdings in Jardine Matheson and Swatch and British American Tobacco. I mean, Berkshire's in there too. But and if I looked at your top 10 holdings, there are a lot of globally based companies mm -hmm. as well as companies that do a global business. So, so why is that? Why are you, you know, and from the get go at Wintergreen, you've emphasized global businesses. I think the key thing is the U.S. is a mature economy, and we have a lot of debt. Same thing is true for the EU. And so the big opportunities are going to be the four or five billion people out there who want what we have, and they want it. So, so and let, let me pick up on that, yeah. because I know that you just returned from you know, one of your many trips to Asia, and you said you've, you came back with a very strong impression stronger than even before. Yeah. So what was that impression? Well, I've, done, I've gone for 20 years in a row. And you know, this year I was there for a month. Right. And I you know, went to places like Surabaya in Indonesia. And you see that people really want a better tomorrow. And that this idea, you know, partially because of the internet, partially because of um, just my friend has a scooter, I want a scooter. Right. You know, my friend has a Tissot watch, I want a Longines watch. And, you know, and it's, it's really happening. And so the consumer environment that really started here is now spreading this idea, is spreading everywhere. And so what we want to do, we want to position Wintergreen as a catcher's mitt for the capital appreciation that has happened already and we think is ahead of us. Another interesting thing, of course, if, if you look at the newspaper and the headlines, I mean, take China, for instance. I mean, everybody's fixated on what the People's Bank of China is going to do. You know, are they tightening or are they loosening? Is China cracking down on human rights or are they loosening up on human rights? I mean, you know, we just talked off camera about the pollution issues. Mm -hmm. uh, there are all sorts of issues. You know, we're focused on the problem. So, so, so what, you know, what, is the, what are the headlines that you pay attention to that might affect whether you are going to invest in companies that, for instance, are dependent upon China or Asia? We what do you pay attention to? <laughs> I can't tell you exactly what's going to be, but I know two very important facts that are you know, over and above the headlines. The government wants prosperity and stability. And those two things create a long-term opportunity and you know, all kinds of perils along the way. But if you're positioned properly in the right businesses, which we believe we are, and we keep looking for more, that's what we think is important about China. So, so David, is, is there one company that's kind of emblematic of the kinds of, uh, kind of company that really benefits tremendously from the, this aspirational Asian consumer? Richemont is uh, the owner of Cartier. It's listed in Switzerland. You know, it's, uh, it's sort of a multi-dimensional multi company. But they own Cartier, and Cartier is a French company. And people love Cartier. It's the most aspirational jewelry brand and it's the most global. And so, you know, you find Cartier stores, uh, you know, in the Wynn Macau, they had to have two, two, because the one couldn't sell the jewelry fast enough. So, you know, we love businesses like that. Well, talk about Wynn Macau, because that's also one of your holdings. Yeah. And, it, and it's, you know, I, I know that, that you hold companies, you know, long-term, average holding period, what is, five years still, four to five years? So, but, when Macau is, is a, a company that, uh, that you're, I know you're very enthusiastic about. So t t tell us about that story. Well, Macau is this enclave. It's a special administrative region. It's uh, controlled by the People's Republic of China, but it's the only legal place to gamble in China. 
There's six operators. Wynn is one of them. So unlike Las Vegas, where anybody can basically show up and get a license, I mean, that's an exaggeration, but you have a lot of competition. You only have six players. And there are more and more people who want to come to Macau to play. Now, the Chinese are notorious for loving gambling. Gambling for the ethnic Chinese, there is no social stigma. Grandma gambles. It's fun. It's part of the budget. And so, you know, it's really, Macau is just a wonderfully wild place to see because, you know, the Chinese have a lot of fun. Yeah. And so, but the Win Macau, what is it about well, that company well, in particular? Well, we think S Steve Wynn's a very smart guy and he's got a proven record. He's very shareholder focused. Um, this is a controlled company in Macau. Um, so it's controlled by the parent company, but we have the money at Win Macau level, which trades in Hong Kong. Right. And so it's purely focused on Macau. And they have a building, which give or take makes a billion dollars a year in cash. They do a very high quality job. They're really essentially the high-end uh, provider of, of gaming in Macau. And you know they're obsessed on the details. And it's really a US company that's operating there. And we think the management's excellent. And so we're very comfortable. You get paid 5% to wait, and they're going to build out uh, something called the Kotai Strip. And you said you get paid 5% to wait because that's the dividend yield. Yeah. OK. So you get paid to wait, you know, talking about interest rates before. Right. And they're building another whole branch of the, of the gaming in 15 minutes away in, in Kotai. And it's 51 acres. And it'll take a couple years to build out. But it's going to be big. You know, it should be big. And, and you're not worried about the market being saturated or win overextending itself or? They have a conservative balance sheet. Um, you know, we believe, you know, it's their money too. Right. There's 28, 32 million visitors now. They think they'll go to 100 million. So <laughs> people want to go. And so, you know, we love these situations where the demand is going up like this, the supply is like this and they have pricing power. And so, you know, we're just trying to stack the deck in the wintergreen investors' favor. So what about the risks, the political risks in China, for instance? And, and when, I, when wintergreen runs a pretty focused portfolio mm. and your top five holdings, of which Win Macau is not one of the top five, right. um, is 30% of the portfolio. So, you know, I mean, if, if one of these companies blows up, that's going to hurt you. Sure. Uh, so are you worried about any of your companies blowing up? Or has that happened in the, your wintergreen experience since 2005? Or You know, things can always go wrong. Yeah. But most of our companies have no debt or very little debt, net cash, free cash flow, are diversified globally. And if something happens in China, it's going to affect us. Right, The world sure. is a small place today. But most of these businesses we own are super resilient. And, you know, we've studied them. We've crawled through them. And they're conservatively managed, and most everybody who runs the companies has almost all their own wealth side by side with you. People behave, this is your show. You care on a whole different level because your name is on the door. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that's true with Jardine Matheson. And they're, they're just first rate. Jardine Matheson, what, what, what's the story there that is still a growth and value story? They have uh, three principal businesses. One is basic is small, essentially convenience stores, food stores, a dairy farm. That's a growing business. It's very hard to get space. They control something called Astra, which is in Indonesia. It's the biggest company in Indonesia. There's 240 million people in Indonesia who all want things that Astra sells. It's a very well-run company, locally run company. Um, and then they control Hong Kong land, which is some of the most valuable real estate in the world and it's very ably managed as well. And then they have a smaller diversified portfolio. It's undervalued. They're focused on creating long-term value for shareholders. They've bought back stock. They're honest. They're conservative. They're good people. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been with them for a long time. Right, we, right. we believe. Yeah. So it, it, some of the, the newer companies that, yes. that, that you've been uh, investing in, and I know you, we, we talked about Win Macau, but there's a Brazilian company uh, that, that you now own, and I'm not sure I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to botch the pronunciation. Is it Cello or? Uh, Cello or Cielo. Cielo. Yeah. Right. It's, you know, we've learned, you know, we invested in MasterCard. We made a lot of money in MasterCard. Right. 
And we I mean, still are like you it. out of Mastercard? No, no, we still like it. Right. And part of the reason we like Mastercard is the world is going to plastic. It used to be you went to the supermarket, you paid in cash. Now almost everybody slides a card through. And so, you know, Mastercard's grown globally. And so we've tried to look at what are opportunities to get in that same business. So we came across this company in Brazil, 190 million people in Brazil. They're all getting interested in credit cards and debit cards and swiping with your phone. And Cielo's got 50% market share. Wow. Trades at 13 times earnings, next year's earnings, it's had a good year, and it's a good business. And it's, we know it's gonna happen. And as long as they execute, we'll make money. And every day I can sort of think about, oh, 190 million Brazilians, <laughs> you know. And more of them having these the credit cards. Correct. But you look at the headlines again, and people are saying Brazil, it's a, you know, a functioning democracy, but you have these massive protests now among people who are in you know, the middle class. So, I mean, how do you figure that into your equation? You know, it's very hard not to get shaken out by headlines. Right. And, you know, I think Brazil will have its problems, but it also has enormous opportunities. And we think that whatever the, the, the short-term troubles are, people will still want to use plastic. It's inevitable. And what, you know, part of the issues in Brazil are that's what's happened with iron ore prices and that'll change. But headlines are often an opportunity because people today focus on the negative. And we're very much focused on, ah, where can we make money out of this? Why aren't you more wary about what the markets can do to you I'm optimistic because I feel like we've really done the work, we continue to do the work, and we find these things that are companies that are wildly mispriced. And what's so different about today, it used to be we had to buy dented soup cans in the old days, you know, and right. turn the Is label around. Right, a deep around. value investor. Yeah, that's right, what you have to do. Right. Today we can find, you know, first class merchandise trading at, you know, 50, 60 percent discounts. I've never seen anything. So, what I try to do is steal myself and you know, get the encouragement sometimes to just you know, keep going, stay focused, and you go to Macau. <laughs> you, know, you go see what's going on, and you get, out of, you get out of your chair, you turn off the television, and you go on the road. So that's so interesting. So that really is a big change as far as the, the dented can versus the great oh. merchandise selling at discounted values. That's such an interesting observation. One last question, which we always end our interviews with, is if there's one investment that we should all own in a diversified long-term portfolio, what would it be? I would own Nestle. Really? Still? All right, yeah. that's, that's and and Nestle has become first. controversial because they're growing a little slower. You know, they own L'Oreal. People don't know what's going to happen but it has a three, three and a half percent yield. They sell products that the world needs. When I was in Indonesia, in all these little places, Nestle products everywhere, you know? And I think that you could own Nestle, put it in your back pocket or your safety deposit box and come back in 10 years and it'll be worth more. And, and that's the way we feel about Wintergreen as well, is that people should get their focus long-term. And that's how to get wealthy. All right. Well, I look forward to, you know, 2005, you launched Wintergreen. I look forward to another decade talking to you about what's uh, your optimism about the world thank and you. finding great companies. David, thank you so much for joining us. So nice to see you, Consuelo. At the conclusion of every wealth track, we try to leave you with one suggestion to help you build and protect your wealth over the long term. This week's Action Point takes a page from Winters and most of our other great investor guests. It is look for the positive trends. In investing, that means regardless of the negative headlines, and let's face it, 99% of headlines are negative, great investors search for what is working and will work in the years ahead. Winters focus on companies that cater to the aspirational consumers. The Henrys are high earnings, not rich yet populations in emerging markets who are working and spending toward a better life is a classic example. Well, next week we are exploring another universal goal for a financially secure retirement. We will discuss the need for a new retirement conversation and why insurance is going to be a key component with retirement pros Mary Beth Franklin and Kim Lankford. 
If you have missed any of our past great investor or financial thought leader guests, you can find them on our website, wealthtruck.com, as well as additional interviews and information in our Wealth Truck Extra feature. In the meantime, have a great weekend and make the week ahead a profitable and a productive one. New York Life, along with Mainstay's family of mutual funds, offers investment and retirement solutions so you can help your clients keep good going. Additional funding provided by Luma Sales, investors seeking exceptional opportunities globally. Wintergreen, your home for global value. And Rosalind P. Walter.